This is a sleepy cast lost episode. Senior Treachery, Agua Edition, featuring Stamper, Rice Pirate, and Johnny Utah. My name is Captain Dickhead. FYI, refried beans look exactly the same coming out, and you can't even taste the difference. <sighs> All right, what's on the agenda tonight, tonight ladies? Well, rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, Stamper. St- uh, Stamper's, Stamper's back. Stamper's back. Stamper's back. Stamper's back. Jeff's just like, uh. The end. He's oh right. yeah. He's right. What? And I'm I'm with I'm with Rice Pirate and oh, hey. Johnny Utah. Hey, how's it going? And we're gonna keep this one really casual and relaxed, lady. Yeah, see, Stamper just got back from a long stint in San Diego. He wasn't quitting Sleepy Cabin. I read He wasn't. I read the conspiracy the sleepy conspiracy. I read on the internet he quit. Yeah. That he quit or he was killed or he died from alcohol poisoning or piss poisoning. What well that's the other? fucking news to me, all of it. So oh, yeah, that's right, because you disappeared off the radar but you're back yeah i was working surprise yeah are you allowed to say what you were working on yeah i was working on game four with the behemoth oh the end sounds great that was a good story yeah hey mick do me a favor yeah so i got this bottle of smart water here (laughs) yes and uh on the back what the fuck did you tape to it did you just do that that, is that your fly trap dude it's a fruit fly trap if you put a little cone of paper in the top just look up fruit fly traps and you'll understand what i'm talking about why are you full you're full of like the weirdest life hack information like when we do our cooking show i want you to show people that sponge trick okay just all sorts of weird ass shit so basically there's a smart Smart water bottle cut off the top, and then a cone of paper that's put into the top and then taped on, and then what? What happens? And then, well, you put like. Uh, Wait, hold on. Jeff looked like he knew. Oh, uh, it's kind of related, but there was some. Somebody left something out in here yeah. one day. It was the bet. It was filled with flies, and I said, "What genius set this up?" And oh, it turned right. out somebody just left in like an open soda bottle, and it wasn't oh, yeah. intentional. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so the idea Oh no, water I mean like the at the house too. Like you leave some standing water like in the bathtub or something, yeah. you come back a couple days later and it's just like the whole bottom of the bathtub's filled with disgusting dead animals. Maybe in China. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the cone it points at the top, so they fly down to get the vinegar or mm-hmm. whatever you put in the bottle and then they can't get back out. And then you just throw the whole bottle away. This has this has been a fucking holocaust. This catches shit left and right. Yeah. So it's either you can put blue cheese dressing, whatever will attract fruit flies. Sure. Normally, but anyways, so I got a smart water bottle, and you see this bright blue text on the back. Yeah. I want you to voice act your way through that. Okay. As if it was a commercial. All and right. Everyone can hear how fucking patronizing this shit All is. All right. Now I have had a beer. That, that sounded shit. I've had like 20 beers, and it's been a long day. <laughs> I've had a beer. <clears throat> All right, here you go. Smart water. Here you go. You ready? Clouds get a bad rap. They're the unsung heroes because they contain nature's purest source of water. That's why we copied our puffy white friends to create pure, vapor-distilled smart water. But we won up the clouds by adding electrolytes. It's a difference you can taste, unless you like the taste of stuff that comes from the ground. <laughs> like spring water. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I'm telling you. What the fuck did this? Like spring water. Unless you uh. like the taste of water that's on the ground. What, the, what is this? Fucking cloud water? Is My it just ass. me or is that. That is the most fucking Like we've been sitting shit. around fucking drinking cloud water all day. You fucking ground water drinkers. Drink some fucking cloud water, you noob. They what have, the fuck is this? Paying advertising people like over a hundred thousand a year to to write shit like that water. at yeah. the it literally says unless you like the taste of stuff that comes from underground and then in parentheses like spring water <laughs> and then, on every other bottle of water no, no, like no. that's it that it's like deer park spring water. fiji yeah. whatever it's like oh we come from underground springs doing this and that you know it's what? like you know what Fuck that's that. not good enough i'm gonna tell you right now that's the worst fucking advertising ever because a lot of the nutrients that you get like mineral shit mm-hmm. be, is because it comes from the ground you get like the the calcium and uh there's a bunch of not calcium but the, the, there's a bunch of minerals zinc and shit like that yeah you get from water that comes from the ground yeah 
You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit's healthier. And then with smart water, they have to justify it early and be like, Yeah, we, we have uh, vapor distilled water that we add shit to. No, I love <laughs> I love how the font, too, is like so bright. It's like, you can't fucking miss it. Look at it, it's like aqua fucking blue. Yeah, and they do that thing where it's all lowercase, so it's like, yeah, you yeah, know, we're we hip. don't care. We're hip and cool. Yeah. My problem with water bottles... Fuck smart water. Nah, smart water's good. They're actually. I don't know if you've gone. I don't know if you've looked at them in Wawa lately, but they're starting to look more and more like shampoo bottles than <laughs> something you do. Dude, yeah. Voss water looks exactly like a shampoo bottle. Yeah. It does. It does. It's more than one. Dude, yeah. when Voss first came out, it was like fucking like forty dollars a bottle or something. Now it's like really fairly comparable. I remember when it first came because it was a club. It was like in the clubs, you get water. Mm -hmm. And they put it like in a Voss bottle, and it'd be like so fucking expensive. You go to a titty bar, and it's all fucking Voss. Well, they also bottle. had. Didn't, did, wasn't the, there like some Jay Z thing or some like, whatever where it was like uh, gold? There was like gold in the water. It was like literally it had gold oh, flakes yeah, in yeah. it, and every bottle was like a hundred fucking dollars, or just water with gold in it, whatever. So, so you're like, drinking gold? Fuck those assholes. Burger King saying? and McDonald's have. Like the uh, Pepsi and Coke water brands mm -hmm. and strip clubs have the Voss water. That's brand. right. <laughs> strip clubs, also <laughs> high end fucking coffee shops. It's also, like talk Voss does sparkling and still water. It's talking about water, well, actually, I, I don't want to sound like a nerd, but Pellegrino next to like my own. Uh, what's it called? The fucking... I, I brought it to the house. The, the soda... Yeah, the soda stream. Soda, soda stream. Fucking love that shit. But yeah, if it's not that, I, I do like carbonated water. I'm a big carbonated water guy. Um, <coughs> and also, like, uh, there's, like, flavored seltzer waters. I, I don't know if it's Seagram's. I can't remember who makes it, but, like, all those flavored ones I fucking love, like the raspberry one. Anyways. I can't stand carbonated water. It's because you're gay. Either. But anyways, I was going to say, the other water... <laughs> no, it's, like, tricking you. It's, like, soda... <laughs> And it tastes salty. Yeah. It's With not this, fucking salty. I know, but it like tricks you into thinking you're drinking a broken soda. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, it's like, a, well look, if you're a diet soda drinker, there's nothing like flavored with no calories and no like fake sugars. Do you know why I have a bad reaction to it? It's like whenever you go into a, a restaurant and use like the soda machine. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't, and, they don't and have it, any, and yeah. it's broken. Oh yeah, yeah it that's what it tastes it like. Because yeah. it doesn't have the syrup in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, you, it just kind of like, tastes oh, like I'm that. Buying that's what I think soda. of, yeah. yeah. Well, well, broken soda. Change your thoughts. <laughs> change, change your mind. There's this one soda that I got. It's called black, or this one water, bottled water called black. Yeah. Is that what it's called, black? But basically it's, the water is like brownish black. Oh, and, and it's water, yeah. And it's mineral water. But they're like, yeah, it's because it comes from the ground. Like, it's so far, it's so far deep in the ground. This water's fucking black. It doesn't make any f But it's, it's super. It is black water. And yeah. it is healthy. I got it from Joa. I've never heard of this. I fucking drink it all the time. Oh, I don't what drink it all the time. What is actually it? making it black? It's not just minerals. minerals. They say it's minerals. They say it's because it's not like this. Dude, it looks like Coke, but it's not carbonated. It's, it's not, yeah, straight exactly. up black water. It looks water. like Coke, and when you drink it, it tastes like rocky <clears throat> water. Like you're drinking water out of a river. That sounds like a nightmare for people Dude, with kidney it, stones. Did you ever great. read that story where they, they they went down into a cave and they found water that was... What? I, I, I don't want to get the details messed up here, but they found still... Like, they found resting water yeah. that bubbled up out of the ground that was literally millions of years old. What? Yeah, like it was just sitting in the ground for millions. Wait, 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 how did they test it? Did it have like organisms from a million millions of years ago? There was either a lack, a comp there was such a lack of oxygen in the water. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they. I, I wish, I wish I researched this before I knew this was going to be the water podcast. But the water podcast. Yeah, like the water pop bubbled up out of the ground when they went into this cave, and it was. Apparently, I, I don't know what was wrong with it, but it, it, it was like pure water, but somehow it was almost borderline poisonous to drink. Yeah, of course. Dude, they always talk about, like, if you had a time machine mm -hmm. and you went back in time for, like, dinosaur times, mm -hmm. you breathe the air and you'd be fucking dead because of all the organisms and all the shit that your body is not prepared for. And or you, just by being there and breathing, would kill, like, every fucking thing around you. Like, if you, like, sneezed on a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it would just fucking keel over and Maybe. die. Because we've got, like, it, it, there's just different organisms in our body and in, you know what I mean? Like, the, the different toxins and stuff like that. This ain't the Simpsons, man. That what if scientists It absolutely would. would happen. If you sneezed on a fucking dinosaur, I yeah. bet you would kill it. There's some scientists. If you could get in a dinosaur's like, face, guys. I guess, yeah. Well, he'd eat you and then he you, you'd kill him with your poison. Apparently, the oxygen body. in the atmosphere was way more dense back then. That's too, true, too. That's right. You may not even be able to breathe. That's the other thing, yeah. Whether it was more dense or less dense, regardless, the, the air back then was very different. 
So I like go back to when there was no trees and there was just like pretty much like big mushrooms. Then you, <laughs> that was the, there's no way you could survive then. Absolutely. I'd love to see it though. Yeah. I want to go back and see dragons. I want to see large. I want to see car-sized scorpions. I want to see car-sized scorpions. scorpions. There were. They were. They were real. Were they? Yeah. They have a skeleton, an exoskeleton. They found, they found some scorpions. Don't have bones, dick. <laughs> That's why I said exoskeleton. It might have been aquatic oh, exoskeleton. scorpions or something. I remember seeing a. I saw a fun illustration of a scorpion that was the size of a small car. So you could see like a dinosaur getting fucking killed by a scorpion because it was. I don't. I don't know if they attack dinosaurs. Oh yo, what was that? Um, the um, shit. I forget what it was called. It was called um. I want to say like the fox eagle or whatever the hell. What the was. fuck? This is like the biggest eagle on the face of the planet, mm -hmm. and it, it went extinct. Not I wouldn't say recently. Not but too long ago. Though. Not like too long ago. Years ago. Few yeah, thousand. it was like the world's largest eagle. It was massive. Oh yeah, no. Then they say like it, it could it attacked people. It could easily scoop you up and just take you away. It was huge. So it was like the eagles from Lord of the Rings. They apparently the, the humanoids. Basically, human, yeah, the people ten thousand years ago, three years ago were actually scared of this thing. Were they riding them? I don't think they did. No. They, did they no. did into they, the no. sunset? They, this, they tamed hunted, them and then were able to ride them. Possibly hunted people. No, it was called like the Hawkins Eagle or whatever. Just mm. type in like giant eagle. No, yeah, it was huge. Yeah. I just gotta it was say, fucking massive. There's nothing sexier than like anytime you see like a woman riding some huge ass fucking animal, like a polar bear or like a tiger, holding like a Frank, sword up Frank in the air Frazetta, or right? Yeah. He did the drawings of the girl like riding the polar bear or like tigers and shit like that. Like yeah. the cover of heavy metal. Oh, yeah, actually yeah, they yeah. did that. Exactly, yeah, like yeah. heavy metal, exactly like that. Yeah. But they did uh, But they did that in uh, that, that uh, Fury, uh, fucking Kung Fury, where that girl was riding the huge ass gray wolf. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that, that shit's fucking hot. I think there's nothing sexier <laughs> yeah. than a woman blowing me while she's naked. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and then having sex with me That's while a lot. she's I, naked. I, I, I you think lost it, that one, Mick. I think it's sexier if she's fully clothed, to be honest. You like watching them ride around on wolves and stuff like that, but yeah. I like naked women that are blowing me and having sex with me. <laughs> what are you, a pervert? <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> Get with the program. All right, speaking well, of water and women, yeah. shit. I haven't been on a podcast in so long, I forget how this shit operates. You you do what you're doing right now. Just keep drinking and talking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be a okay. Yeah. You look like fucking Daredevil right now. With he your, does look like Daredevil. Yeah, with your fucking beanie over your face. It's a Daredevil mask. Mm hmm. <laughs> You know what I never understood about Daredevil? The old, Eye holes! The old, yeah, exactly. The, <laughs> the old comic and the new show, like, he gets his costume and the dude puts eye holes in it. The dude can't see so. anyway. They they're not. Re oh, look, they they have like the. Why eye not hole keep the fucking like the thing? Just his whole mask is just a yeah, blank. Yeah, yeah. But it's slate. not real eye holes. It's just like it's like the shape of the eye hole, but it's covered. To what? For what end? I, I Maybe it's to make the your enemies think you could see to make them more yeah, intimidated. Yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't your enemies be more intimidated if, dude, if you got your ass Maybe. whipped in the street by a blind guy that was clearly covering his face, you'd be scared shitless, yeah, man. I don't know. I'd like to see that test. Would they be more likely to want to swing a bat at your head if they could think you could yes, see? I think they. I think. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think if or you could. see. Oh, I see. If they were blind, right? If I swung a bat at a dude that had his eyes covered and he dodged everything and kicked the shit out of me, I, I would tell everyone. If I saw a guy in a fighting stance yeah. with a mask over his face yes. that clearly couldn't see you, but he was clearly like you knew he could see you? a confident fighting stance oh, okay so you didn't even know so he could it. sense you yeah I, don't, I, I think i'd be more scared yeah i know what know what to do you know why popular media that's like, why I'd be like anything could you've been right trained now. to believe that <laughs> you've been trained well, by zatoichi by freaking uh daredevil at, by all these movies with blind it dudes. would work it would work it would work what's the scariest thing if someone came up to you and they were like they were try to intimidate you what would be the most intimidating thing someone could do to you you're um, in a dark. Hold on, hold on. You you just went to a bar. You're yeah. with your friends. You had a few drinks. It's late. You're trying to get back to your place. You're not really thinking about shit besides getting home. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, on your way to your car, you decide to take a back alley. Some dude stops you in this alley. What is the most intimidating thing this dude could do? See, that's the thing. Like to freak you the fuck out in this alley. If somebody like mm. 
pulled out a knife okay. or a gun yeah. or something like that, I feel like I'd be ready for that. And I'd be like, okay. And then you could run. Well, right? that's interesting. I mean, I've thought about this, actually. And I've thought oh. about what I could do to yeah. intimidate somebody. Okay. Wait, what? I think if he starts just help, like self-harming himself, like if he took a knife and just slowly started like shoving it into his shoulder or something. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. And he's just looking at you and not making an expression as he's... I don't know, something like that, something along those lines. You've thought about this though. Yeah. For me, it's like case. it's just like case, you know, trivial <laughs> shit. Like if they just did something trivial, like it's more confusing than the blunt, anything like violent or yeah. or threatening. It's it's all it's always in the in the trivial shit that it's confusing. It's uh, this one you know that somebody's. Uh, <clears throat> I always thought like if they like pulled their pants down, whipped their dick out, and started jacking off in front of me, I'd be kind of concerned. I'd ask if I could help. <laughs> I just watched a I just watched a video like you need that. help with so, that dude? you did some guy some guy was trying to rob another guy another dude ripped his pants down and the 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 thief ran like booked it out of started chasing him down the street with his pants down and the guy like just the second his pants were down he took off <laughs> I was like that no works. but see it that's works. that's exactly why I said it because I feel like it's the most unexpected <laughs> thing you could imagine he some. Just, if you're like, just, someone tries to rob you, you, you drop your pants, yeah. turn around, start thumbing your asshole or something like that. What's the guy gonna do? What, what like, literally? Pull your hand away from No, your he's not. He's gonna fuck fucking you. run away. <laughs> he's gonna fucking, he's gonna be like, what the fuck is this guy? I'm out. Yeah. I'm done. All the, he's gonna throw his hands up in the uh, air and say, done, I'm done, and walk it, away. It so usually work in 95% of cases. So the next That's time true. you're getting robbed, pull your pants down and pop your thumb up your ass and you'll- I gar You know what? I guarantee you're gonna freak somebody out. I know yeah. Mick would have no problem doing this. <laughs> fuck you. I'd probably hesitate. You know you what? Might. You no, I think Stamper would have no problem. I I'm not all into the ass play like Stamper. I'd kind of, I'd kind of like slowly yeah. pull my pants down, but not in it. He'd have time to like. You'd sensually, slowly unzip. It would, your I'd, nerv fly. I'd nervously do it where he wouldn't be freaked. <laughs> it, you, you'd have to do it really fast to be freaked out right away. That's so. true. You have to do it violently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just scream as loud as you can while you're while you're shaking, <laughs> and then and then and then rip your pants off right in front of him. Yeah, helicopter your dick in front of him. That would definitely fucking freak him out. You don't have to do anything sexual. You could just pull your pants down, just drop them like a toddler at a urinal. Yeah. And then just say something like, I am the god of my own world. Yeah. And just that, stand yeah, there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would work. Yeah. This is, this is, these are all real life advice right here. This is working. You just start helicoptering towards yeah, them. And that's you're right. Like, We're gonna Come get with a... me to Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> you know, We're going to get a letter. Come with me. We're going to get a, la a letter later. <laughs> From somebody that's like, dude, that Valhalla thing saved my fucking life. I pulled my dick out and whipped it around. And yeah, like, or the opposite. The I did the Valhalla thing and the guy chopped my dick off and then <laughs> yeah. fucking shot me. And then he stole my wallet. <laughs> so I'm standing there with the chopped off dick. Can we sip your beer? My you work. can. Thanks. You can't have all of it, though. Oh, Motherfucker. No. So that's Steel Reserve, huh? Yeah, Steel Reserve. This was an old college drink I had with my buddy. Oh, I mentioned him on Twitter not so long ago. My friend Matt, he's actually on Broadway right now. Or he's actually been on Broadway for years now, but he... Uh, Broadway, we, we, huh? Yeah. Mm. It's the poor man's Hollywood. <laughs> oh, shit! No, he's, he's a good... No, but seriously, it He's is. a good guy. But he was actually the one that got me into a lot of trouble back in the day. He's not all that handsome either. Shut up. But he's he likes he's, he's a Jew. Was he the dude that told you to jump on the train tracks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was the one who, who got me to jump on the train tracks. His dad was like a psychologist or something like that. And I guess... Tune into the previous, 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 no, 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 previous, no. So, previous so, episode to get so that So apparently, I didn't know this, but like, if you have a PhD of any kind, if you're a doctor of any kind, you could be the doctor of fucking homosexual dragons. It doesn't fucking matter. If you have a doctorate in something... Good one, Mick. Like me, they fucking hand you yeah. these. They'll give you like, like Viagra and or like antidepressant, like all the experimental shit. As long as you have a PhD, it doesn't matter what the fuck you are. They'll fucking give you these weird ass drugs for shit. So like, I think his dad was like a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I don't fucking remember, but all, all I remember is he would get samples for like via, like different kind of like uh, fucking erectile dysfunction drugs and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we were doing. I think we were doing Coriolanus together. And, uh, You're doing what together? <laughs> Corey, yeah, it sounds like a fucking sexual position. It's a Shakespearean play, you fucking uncivilized I didn't say shit. Okay, anyways, what? so we were doing Coriolanus and or... Uh, there was a couple other things we were doing at the time. Anyways, uh, he handed me some of these things and we would do this thing because we were both poor. 
But he was like, listen, um, and we always dared each other to do stuff for stuff. So it was like, jump in the train tracks, I'll buy you a beer. And I'd be like, well, you do this and I'll give you that. So he was like, listen, I needed breakfast. I, I did. And, I, and he was like, look, I'll buy you a muffin and a coffee if you take this erectile dysfunction drug during rehearsal. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, honestly, like, you know, you're so poor, you, you, you know, it didn't phase you. So I took whatever this fucking shit was, and I remember I got so lightheaded. It was the weirdest fucking thing. I thought it was fucking <clears throat> tripping. I started getting tracers, or are they called tracers? What do you call them in your eyes where- Floaters. Floaters, yeah. yeah. Where I was getting like those little like rainbow shits in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And then apparently, I didn't know this, but he had told one of the cast people, which was a girl, like one of the only girls, that that was what had happened. So she did this thing where she was sitting down, it was in a church at the time, but we were on this church pew and she started like talking to me, like in, like people were rehearsing and it wasn't our scene. And then you fucked No, her. she started, no I didn't fuck her. What? But she started like rubbing my leg while we were talking. And then you fucked her. No, I never fucked her. Alright. God damn it. Alright, But anyways. <laughs> I did get a huge crazy boner and it was very awkward. Especially and then you fucked her. And then I fucked her. <laughs> no, I didn't ever fuck her, you fucks. Anyways, this guy, th that was the guy, like that that was the type of shit that ended up happening. Was and like, then you fucked him. Got, you, then I fucked him. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And then you got new friends that weren't assholes. Right. I, you know what? At the time, though, because it, it was a Hey, Mick, you want no, 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 no. some breakfast? So, no, no, no. so after I jumped in the train tracks, you know I hurt my leg, right? Yo, yeah. is there a lighter? Was there a train anywhere nearby, or did you just jump on empty train tracks? No, there was, we were in a subway. And it was oh, like, you missed a podcast? It was like 3 in the morning. Oh, I was with maybe. this girl who visited from Washington. Um, and by the way, her father was the vice president of uh, Wizards of the Coast. Anyways, and I didn't even really understand what that meant at the time. I couldn't appreciate it. Back now, I'd be like, oh you my mean god. mean she's like, he's a president of, wizard, of a wizard. Vice wizard. president of Wizards of the Coast. Were you thinking of like literal wizards? Or you just Magic thinking? the Gathering, Joan. I know, I know what it is. Anyways, so <laughs> I was on crutches most of that summer. There was a party at his house. And I remember... This is an Irish story. This isn't an Irish story. So, Close. from my place, I was in like... In New York, there's the L train. And the L train takes you from 14th Street or whatever, Manhattan, into Williamsburg, the right? The loser train. Right after Williamsburg, which yeah. is where all the hipsters were born, is Lorimer, and then I think it was Graham, Grand, and then I was on Montrose. That was like the fifth stop, right? Okay. And so we were in Montrose, which is outside of Williamsburg. Williamsburg, like very preppy, like totally safe. Montrose, at the time, was kind of, it was dangerous. So while I was there, he Why was- Why was it dangerous, Mick? Yeah, because, bro. because why, Mick? They were, because gay, I didn't have you to protect. Gay, me. Gays aren't threatening. Okay. What anyways, what? so at, so what happened was his house was like several stops later, but it was so hot and it was a summer and we had friends and we were all going to walk to his place. Okay. But I was on crutches, so we were walking to his place. On our way to my friend Matt's party, yeah, there was a small park ahead of us. We'd maybe gone like a half hour, and the whole trip was maybe like an hour from walking distance. But I was a stupid kid and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just use my crutches. Halfway across, we get to this park and we hear what sounds like fireworks. In, a, in this little park, had some trees. <clears throat> kids. Is it daytime? No, nighttime. Kids, because we're going to the party. Gotcha. Kids come running out, running out of, like, like fucking spiders in bushes, like just pouring out of this park. Spiders and bushes? <laughs> uh, I'm from Washington. When I was a kid, we had these bushes in front of our house. Don't tangent. Go continue and, and, and the original somebody, story. Somebody took like a, a hedge trimmer to these bushes, uh. and apparently there was a spider nest in the, the bushes, and they just pour. It looked like black water just pouring out of a bush, but it was just baby spiders. Just We're back on black water <sighs> again. Oh, yeah, back to the water. Anyways. This is a long... Oh, okay. So, oh, still going. So all these kids start running out of the park. Because of spiders. Uh, no, because of the fireworks that were going off in, in this little park. But it wasn't fireworks. This little black kid hides behind one of the fucking, uh, like the mailing, like the blue uh, uh, mailboxes. Yeah. The, the little curved ones at the top. The post office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he goes, you gotta hide. The gun people are here. And I was like, what? And I'm on crutches. So I'm like trying to be like, uh, like all my friends start running down one of the streets mm -hmm. and I'm like, uh, and I start like running on my crutches, like trying to fucking Your get away. Your friends just bailed on you? They, look, I don't think anyone turned around and was like, oh, we got to get the fuck out. Like, I, I just think everyone- Somebody, just, they just showed up and started shooting. Apparently, no, no, no. Apparently there was <clears throat> actually a gun, like some people shot each other in this park on our way to this party. But what happened was- The, the gun people are here. Yeah, so I- <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, the fucking, so all the kids run out, and this kid was hiding behind the thing, and I'm sitting there with crutches, like, in the middle of the street, and all my friends book down the street, like, past the park, and I'm like, ah, uh, so I'm, like, sitting there trying, I mean, nothing happened to me, obviously. It's too bad. Fuck you. you killed. Anyways, <laughs> so on, that was on the way to the on the way to his party. Yeah. We get to the party, and apparently he had a bunch of absinthe because the set designers from the Dracula show or, or some some show that we had done they they had they would make their own absinthe like flavored absinthe like different types of flavors. But I remember when I got to his house, he was like, "Oh yeah, mix here, yay!" And I told him the story. He's like, "Oh, this crazy blah." But then in front of everybody. He had apparently found some bees, some some half dead bees, and he froze them. This story is like, and he froze them in kind the, of in a straight line, but it's like wave, it's like and then, left and then and he right. put them in the freezer, and then he because we like to dare each other to do things, he had yeah. waited for me to show up just so in front of everybody I would eat the frozen bees. This is an adventure beyond anything I can and imagine. And then, and then I night. ate the bees. I, I I'm going Did to you link chew them the up? reason why I'm telling the story is because I'm going to link them to the podcast because I think he's going to hoot out of it. But anyways, I ate the bees. But initially, I had a I, you know they're sitting there like I don't know if I'm what happens to your tongue if you eat a fucking dead bee? Like do you get stung? I don't know. So then he everyone started chanting. They're like eat the bee, whatever. And then I ate it. Nothing happened. Stamper. What would you rate? What this the story? hell was that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is ten minutes of I don't know. I don't know what that and was. And then I ate the bees. That was a totally Irish story, man. I took a train. I'm half Irish. I took a train with my girl. My name is fucking Mick. For, what? What? That's true. <laughs> my name is Mick. I am half Irish. Not because of my name, but I was my wizard, father. Was there was somebody who was a wizard of the coast president. A train <laughs> eating bees. A black kid with the gun. People <laughs> shooting other people. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the point was. <laughs> the, I don't point, know the point that was. The point was. The uh, point was his friend dared him to do things. Yeah, that was it. Oh yeah, we talked about Christ the Almighty, man. <laughs> so he dared me to eat the bees, but in order to get to the bees, I had to go through the story. God, you're like a woman. It's oh. like uh, every everything you say is it's got to it's it has true. Deta it's details, so not true. details and details. Yeah, so not maybe. true. A little bit. If I was a woman, I would call you while I was up in my room and you were down in your room and I'd be like, "Stamper, what you doing?" No, here uh Oh. Here's what would happen. Hey, give me the beer. Here, take the beer. I'll buy some more. It's like what would you eat for lunch today, Mick? And then it's like, well, this morning I was thinking about uh, making a pumpkin pie, but I thought that was a really bad idea because it wouldn't be done by. It's time. like, what did you do today? Ah, uh, I did some work. Who fucking fun is that? No, I was on crutches. Some dude got shot. Some kid told me to hide, and then I ate some frozen bees. This was over the course of like two hours or something. This was over the course of yeah, like three hours. Let me tell you how a story works. Yeah. Watch. Let yeah, me listen. Let, let me show you. Okay, Jeff. You went to the grocery store recently. What did you buy? Hamburgers. Boring. Done. That's Boring. a story. No, that's not a story. That's just that's a fucking reciting of a fact. Well, no, but we asked How you. How tall are you? 6'3". Eh, well, we got the information and really quick, he bought hamburgers. And you know what? I built up the rest of my mind. I was like, holy shit. He brought them home. He put cheese on them. Ketchup. Speaking of hamburgers, like onions? since I do. Since he got put back. onions on them. Shut up. It maybe some marinated mushrooms. Yes, yeah, trying to get hungry. Oh, now you're become now you're the storyteller. Now you're throwing all the fucking facts and the little details in there. Wrong. I'm throwing toppings on a burger, <laughs> my friend. We should film this. <coughs> kind of like the movie Clue, where like they keep resetting the end of the movie, like different <laughs> shit happens. Mick keeps dying in different ways. Is, is this Groundhog Day to you? Do you feel like you're reliving maybe. the same situation over and over again? Oh, speaking of which, Jeff. Yeah. Hello. Wawa story. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I... Let me know what happened. Well, sure, all right. We have similar stories, but yeah, I went into Wawa, and I was uh, gonna, I was just buying a cappuccino, like a big fag, because <laughs> I need that over my coffee, and uh, apparently this guy was trying to sneak out of Wawa with this, with a 12-inch with a sub, and... Uh, the so, you, at Wawa, mm -hmm. you go yeah. up to the deli counter and you punch in your order and a lot of people aren't familiar with the way Wawa works. It's like... They have a digital ordering system, a little, yeah. little menu. Basically, it's like 7-Eleven or any other convenience store. You walk up and if you want a fucking sandwich, which is really fucking convenient, you can get one at like 3 o'clock in the morning. You walk up and it's like, <clears throat> I want a turkey sandwich and you hit the tomato button because you want tomatoes and so but forth. But it's like run so by on. robots. I just want to be clear, you know, we I think we talk up Wawa a lot. It's not that they have the best food in the universe. It's just the fact that it's so fucking convenient. Available. It's 24-7 yeah. 
every day of the year. So yeah. and the yeah. quality is terrible, right? It's good enough. Yeah. Okay. It's good enough for three, four in the morning. It's definitely good enough. Food. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Well, at three so, in the morning, pretty much anything's fucking great. Ain't no place you can get a sandwich at three like o'clock it. in the fucking morning. Yeah. Right. So a dude orders a sandwich. You place your order, you get a receipt for it, yep. and then they make your sandwich. Right. And then you pay for it, and he did not pay for it? He tried he to walk not, out. He, yeah, apparently the, the uh, what I picked up on, the cashier, he has seen this dude do this several uh, times, where he buys the sandwich, and he'll sneak out with could it. Could you see him eyeing him or something, like, while he was in there? <clears throat> Yeah, well, he caught him. He caught him going out the door. Oh, okay. He saw him going leaving the door, and he said, "Hey, man, you need to pay for that." And he was there. He was there with friends who left, who went out the door before him. And he said, "Oh, no, 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 my my friends, pay, pay, you know, picked up the bill. They paid for it." Were they really his friends, or was he just pointing at random people? They they came in with him, so yeah, they were his. I don't know if I don't know if his friends knew he was play, placing the blame on them or not, mm. but the cashier is like, "No, no, no, that's fucked up." He's like. I know you didn't pay for it. I have a follow-up to this, but yeah, go on. And <laughs> and the guy, you know, this guy is like some. He you know he looked strung out or drunk or on drugs or you know he looked. His eyes were like really wide open and bloodshot, and yeah. I don't know what the hell was going on. But yeah, he came back in. He's like, no man, I paid for. It. He's like, and the cashier. He's like, listen. He's like, he's like, I know I've seen you do this before. You're not getting away with it. He's like, if you walk out that door right now, I'm calling the cops. Yeah. And the guy, you know, I think the cashier is being reasonable. He's like, if you just give me, if you give me that back right now, I won't call the cops. Right. But I want you to get out of here right, right now. So you know guy, what's weird though? What's up? He's probably gonna take it to the back and just throw the sandwich in the trash. Oh yeah. Well, you'd have to, yeah. The <clears throat> same guy, the same guy made fucked up my order last night. And I, but I said, yeah, it's okay, it's cool. I don't want to waste the food, so I just took it. And it's I, more like a matter deal. of principle. You're like a good you, man. You just can't do it. Yeah. But. I like that exactly. Too. Yeah. No, but you know, I think this guy was fed up because I think his coworker. He, I think he was extra pissed off at his coworker too because his coworker always kind of let the dude leave and didn't right. didn't make a stink about it. But um, so he <laughs> he walks up, rips the sandwich out of the dude's hand, he leaves. Then the woman behind the counter is like, "Hey man, you want me to call the cops?" And he's like, "Nah." But then the guy comes back and he's angrier. He's like, "What?" Yeah, he comes back in. The goes, thief comes yeah, back. Yes. He really wanted. He's angry. self entitled motherfucker. Yeah, he's giving the cashier shit. And what does he say? At first, he's like, I think he was upset that the guy was threatening to call the cops on him. So he's giving him shit about that. And then he leaves again. And then he comes back again. He's like, you disrespecting me? And you know, he's saying this disrespect. How can me. you defend your point? You just I try to know. rob the fucking place. I don't know. He's getting really... And then he starts leaning over the ca- uh, leaning over the counter at the Uh-oh. cashier. And I'm Uh-oh. like... Uh-oh. And the whole time you're standing there just trying to buy a fucking this, cappuccino. This is, the <laughs> this is why it's good you carry yeah. a gun with you. You know? Like, just in case of these The woman finishes my cappuccino, by the way. Puts it on the counter. You need a downgrade to a pistol, though, man. This fucking shotgun's not Yeah, dude. It's fucking huge. But... Put a hole in somebody. I, I was initially be- feeling inconvenienced, but now I'm getting nervous because this guy is getting a little aggressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know it's going to happen. You know something's going to happen. And then he's leaning over the counter. And then his friend comes back in. Oh, no. And I'm like, okay. Oh, shit. All right. This is, uh, this is about to get interesting. But luckily, the friend, as in, I've, you know, as, you've, as I've seen, as many people I'm sure have seen this situation, see the drunk friend acting up. Oh, right. And rip and pull him, away, pull him out of the situation. Yeah. But then you know, then the cop comes and you know. Oh and shit! So wow, that was a fast turnaround for the cops. The cop came very fast. He came within like I swear he was there in less than a minute. Well, the police wait, this, officer. Yes, the police officer. And this is Glenside, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's cops all over Glenside <clears throat> all the time. If police I police officers. Sorry, if I drive down any like Easton Road. At any point in time after 11 p.m., I see at least four or five cops just Police camped out. Police officers. What did I say? Cops. I oh, think, shit. I think this Sorry. is a, technically <laughs> a slightly lower than normal crime area with high taxes. So they, yeah. I think they have plenty of cops on the... Oh, yeah. Plenty of police officers Yo, on they the show payroll. up at our office all the fucking time. But I do feel safe in the area. I mean, I do. They, they seem like... I just don't want a speeding ticket, but... Yo, they come by the office and they bang on the door. I'm like, who is it? <laughs> Who is it? That's why I don't want you with that fucking that fucking uh, blank gun anywhere around. Oh, dude, did, yeah. The, there's that one time that they've come by before. They bang on the door and like, "What are you doing here?" Mm-hmm. 
And it's like, oh, we work here. This is our building. It's like, oh, really? Can I come in? It's like, yeah, you can. <laughs> and this one dude came by once. This, this one police officer came yeah. by once. And uh, he walked around the place. And the first thing I had to tell him was, dude, that's not a real gun. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting there with fucking bullets all around it. But I'm just I'm just paranoid as fuck that some cop's going to come, like... Zach, Chris, or Nile are going to be doing something in here, and a cop is going to bust in and see that. Go. Like, Nile just going to pick up the gun like a joke. He's like, Ugh, <laughs> and then he's going to get killed. Fucking Hans did that. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, you want to let, you want to tell that story? I wasn't there. I thought, oh, were you there? No. Okay. But a cop actually came up to him. Well, yeah, they were, f- Chris and Hans, and I don't know who the fuck was doing it, but they were filming something in the front yard <laughs> in broad daylight. <laughs> Shooting a fucking pistol that shoots when it, blanks. And when it actually worked, were they actually were they actually shooting blanks or was it? Yeah, and then somebody called the cops on them. Like it was making realistic right gun sound. sounds. This is exactly what. It, yeah, yeah. Right. Dude, no, there's horror stories of people that think that blanks are just blanks and they don't mm-hmm. do anything, but yeah. they're fucking they're really dangerous. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. We, to test it out, we went to the basement and we drew a face on a piece of paper and we held it up mm-hmm. and we pointed the gun right into the piece of paper and the paper fucking exploded. You know, you can do that. You can do that from like <laughs> into the, fucking confetti, dude. You can do that from ten feet away. That's the biggest problem. Like when when I went to because I went to acting school, but one, our teacher David Bremer, he was telling all these horror stories because he used to work on some of the sets of like some of these films. Mm-hmm. People have and, killed themselves. Yeah, they have heard, yeah. because they'd be like fucking around with their friends and be like, yeah, it's a gun with blanks, and they put it right up to their temple uh. and they fucking pull the trigger and guess what their fucking brains get blown out by air <clears throat> like no bullet comes out but they can fucking kill themselves with a blank because people are fucking stupid or they do it to their friends like oh check this out check this out and they fucking pull the trigger on a blank in front of their friends and fucking blow their eye in or blow their fucking brains out and their I, skulls like shatter inward and, and the one thing I it's noticed, still the air I still, still I like feel the nervous holding a, a plastic gun up to my head yeah. well the thing there too is like why, why even do that because I've shot real pistols and I swear to Christ that thing over there cracks off louder by two three oh, yeah. four times louder than anything any real pistol would do. You'd well, probably because there's no head. resistance. If you have a bullet, I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact. But, but, like, why would you put that by your ear ever? Right, 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 right. Why would you put it, right, right, right. We shot it in the basement. I couldn't hear for three days. <laughs> and that was just from, like, sound resonating around the sure. fucking place. Yeah. So, wait. So, what happens at the end of the Wawa story? The friend pulls him off and that's it? Uh, you know. Uh, I might have gotten it, that Hans it was story on a, wrong, It was uneventful. It was uneventful. But, yeah, the cop... Not you know not not to disparage. did you feel like something could have if his friend didn't come in did you feel like something could have happened yeah yeah definitely the guy he was getting really agitated I mean and the and the friend when again he, man and you know what, what the can fact, you say hold on the fact that his know. friend had to come in and stop it probably tells you that yeah that situation could have gotten ugly because his friend knew I mean it was basically myself and there was <laughs> there was a delivery man in there too we were both. We were both like in a holding pattern. We're like, all right, what are we, we're just gonna yeah. stand here. We're and, gonna wait for something to happen. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna observe. Yeah, and if if this and little if I need to drop kick this somebody, little asshole, yeah, starts swinging, we're gonna try. Yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to be a fucking hero, but I feel like in this situation, I feel like I would have had to have done something to help and not run out like a little girl. <laughs> Over, right you're not you're not a little girl, Jeff. You are you I'm are just a saying. man. I'm just saying. I'd have Though I, to, I, I did beat you at arm I'm, wrestling. You did. You did. <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing that. No, I'm I'm actually I actually told Stamper this morning that I, I attributed it to you drinking, that I was sober when we arm wrestled. I think you just had the edge on me. You just had the uh, you had the edge. I'm Chinese. telling you, man. None of you went over the top. I'm Chinese, so I, I have right. chi we'll, we'll, power. We'll have a rematch. No, we will, and I All think right. you will destroy me. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna work. I, if I hear I'm Chinese one more time. To make up for I'm anything Chinese. you're doing. You <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because my math skills, I always say I'm Chinese. You're enjoying this Chinese shit. It's a little too much, Mike. You, you know, know what? It, Dude, he could just go into the kitchen and throw cheese on the floor. I'd be like, Why, why'd you do that, Mick? Be like, well, I'm Chinese. And then right. just walk away. And it's <laughs> like, right. well, you know what? You're not from a sacred Ming dynasty clan no. that does things a very specific I'm way. From the, I'm a from human the sacred uh, Wang dynasty or Wang dynasty. Mm. No, whatever. Give me that. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, where were we? Well, I'm glad you survived that encounter. 
And that you didn't have to fucking kill somebody. My only, actually, my biggest problem with the, the whole dude going out of his way not, to fucking not steal to disparage a sandwich. police officers. I, I, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of these like fuck the police. Ah! Uh, you know, I, I respect police, but this guy, this police officer that came in, yeah. I just want to say, you know, I'm trying to say it as respectful as possible, but okay. if you're a police officer of the law, you'd think being in a reasonable amount of shape is... Dude, once again, there yeah. is no reason that triple XL police officer <laughs> uniforms need to exist. I don't know how you could walk in with a huge at This dude had an Yo, enormous I saw, beer gut. I saw a cop the other day that had breathing problems. He could barely walk. And he's yeah. got his full gear on and his fucking... Why are they making... Police officers should be... I wouldn't say feared, but you should look at a police officer with respect. You should be like, holy shit. That should be like a, a profession that you want to get into. Like something that's like, oh shit, when I'm older, I'm going to be a cop. But Jesus Christ, Dude, that's man. that's the same thing with PE teachers. I've seen... I, I've had more out of shape... Yo, phys ed teachers than I've had in shape to phys ed teachers. Full, full stop. How yeah. can you be a morbidly obese police officer? It doesn't make any sense. See, the thing with this guy was he was sick, like 6'4". He wasn't even morbidly obese. It was just a dude that looked like he went home at night and drank beer and did nothing else. Like, this guy could clearly... Like, he had the frame to be, like, a monster if he wanted to be. He could be yeah. this huge And he may have dude. been at one point. But, but my man's got bad, like handfuls of yeah. Doritos and just yeah, he just oh. waddling around. Lazy. The way you did that, handfuls of Doritos. I thought you meant like he had handfuls of titties. <laughs> the way you did that, it looked like he was holding his own boobs. Not in his shape. Not oh even, yeah. And even though yeah. this dude was like way taller than me, I'm looking at him like I'm like I'm not even scared of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't you don't look intimidating at all. Yeah. When you see a cop like you're when you see a police officer and he's <laughs> okay. like his pistols unbuttoned and he's just waddling around the store and he's. <laughs> Yeah. Trying to get away with free Wawa sandwiches. And <laughs> like, as our point was, well, your life, your your actual life depends on your sure physical your ability to do physical yeah. abilities. You think you'd put a little more stock in that, right? Yeah, but unless you're shielding your gun or enough. Anyway, right, well, you. you could you could share your little anecdote about your you have the same story from San Diego. Oh yeah, so um, and it was always at this one Seven Eleven. That was in the middle of Little Italy. The middle of Little Italy. Okay. The middle of Little Italy. I know Italy. You, li you like saying uh, that. The uh. middle of Little Italy. Uh, the middle of Little Italy. Uh. Alright. Anyways. Not bad. But yeah, the first time I saw that, it's like, yeah, just <clears throat> bums walking in and fucking <laughs> stealing shit. Yeah. And what they did, you know, they just pick up things and put Fuck. in their bags and whatever. But the second time I saw it, it was really weird because I showed up at the 7-Eleven like 8 o'clock in the morning. And I go there, I was just looking for a pack of smokes and some Gatorade because I was hungover from the night before. Yeah. And I walk up and I hold the door open <clears throat> and it took me a second to realize what was happening because it doesn't happen very often in my life. But yeah. the cashier is standing outside and she's fist fighting with somebody that just robbed the place. All she's right. standing right in front of the door. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there looking at him. And, it was, and she was like, you motherfucker, give it back. <laughs> you motherfucker, give it back. And I was like, huh, this is really weird. I don't understand what's going on here. And then she's manhandling him in a way where she's trying to get inside of his coat. He's not trying to get away? He's trying no, to... he's like, he's trying to deny that he stole oh, anything okay. the whole right. time. So she's but... trying to reach into his coat. Yeah, and <laughs> I guess clearly he fucking did. And then she pulls out this fucking stack of lottery tickets. Oh, that's got to be like 50. Shit. I don't even know. They're pieces of paper. So right. it could be like 100 deep. It was yeah. like a fucking inch and a half Brick thick. of fucking tickets. Which this whole situation blows my fucking mind because A, they keep lottery tickets behind the counter. They're just not out somewhere. Are they right. like scratch off ones? Not that it matters. The scratch off ones, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, the ones with all the colorful graphics right, and shit right, on yeah. it and you do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And I'm wondering like how often this happens. But I want to know how the fuck he even stole them in the first place because yeah. they're up under. Yeah. You, you almost have to go behind the counter to steal that shit. 
I thought there was some kind of like thing where like you, it's almost like an Apple credit card or like an Apple uh, card where like a gift card where like if you if it's not activated by the cashier or something like that, then it isn't even fucking legit. Like it's not in the system. Like you could pull out, like you could just grab a stack and you could scratch them all off. And I know. If you didn't pay for them, it's not in the system. So therefore. It's not red. It can't be registered. Exactly. So right. So I, I thought I thought something like that. I, I, if he I won, know. like he couldn't bring it back to Seven Eleven to claim his fucking winnings, right? right. I mean, that wouldn't I don't, make no, any sense. No, I don't think so. I I feel like every single time, anytime it's a lottery of any kind, like they track that shit. I, I, that's what I thought that they track that shit. I don't know. So she's fucking manhandling him. She pulls out a brick of lottery tickets from this guy's jacket or whatever. Right, and then the process worked like this. Uh, right after I saw that, I finally understood what was fucking happening. But um, the dude gets into his car, which was parked right in front of 7-Eleven. Yeah. And you gotta be a dumb motherfucker to rob a place. And park right in front and of it. And park right in front of it. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and she's like, get his license plate number. And I'm sitting there staring at his license plate, just memorizing it, and I'm fucking horrible so, with numbers. Go ahead. And then she went back inside. She tried to scrawl the... It was weird. Like, she she was so pissed at this guy that she took a, a pen out of her pocket and she scratched his license plate into her arm after she told me to get it down. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not a fucking part of this. And I didn't even understand what the fuck was happening because, you know, again, it's not commonplace. Right. And then she went aside and she was like, oh, God, I didn't get his fucking license plate down. Um, and she, like, she was scratching so hard that it was, like, blood coming out of her arm. Jesus fuck. And uh, I was like, yeah, it's MGK6. And she was like, oh, I was writing so fast, I didn't. I was like, dude, you were fucking scratching so fast that I don't even think ink was coming out. That might be blood right there. She has a tattoo now I of that never, guy's license plate. Dude, every other word out of her like mouth was, was fuck him and fuck this and fuck that douchebag and fuck this cocksucker. And it was so funny because there were... As she was fighting, there was a line <laughs> forming at the register for people trying to buy just donuts. Just imagine, though, like, you can't be... Ne I mean, I'm not going to say everyone in those jobs is miserable, but I can imagine a lot of those people are. Yo, I'm and then that shit fucking on top of everything, that, that guy became the, the uh, justified release for all of her fucking pent-up rage working at that place. That guy was just the fucking, like, like, it was perfect. It was a perfect outlet. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm never in San the Diego. The storm. I'm rarely in San Diego, so I can only imagine how often that place is robbed when I'm not there. It's being <laughs> robbed right now, probably. Did you see this is a 7-Eleven, by the way? Yeah. No, I'm Why? just saying, because yesterday I was in a 7 we were in a 7-Eleven, you and me, actually, and uh, the other day, and... You and Mick? You're, you're just saying that, like, 7-Elevens are like this relic from like 1990. Yeah. They they stopped evolving. They in smell 1995. the same from my yeah. childhood, which is interesting. Yeah, it smells like a mix of like the I don't know if it's the Slurpee machine or something, but it they don't have arcade the cabinets same. anymore. But no, sadly, the one I had never did. But they had that little rot. They had that rotating thing that had comic books in it towards the front. And they don't sell the comic they books. They don't anymore. feel modern anymore. No, they don't at all. Especially because they still smell antiquated. Well, we got fucking antiquated. We got uh, Wow Wow this way. Hey, we have our fucking Wawa that was already better than 7-Eleven, and they're like, eh, it's not good enough. And they fucking almost tear the thing to the ground and rebuild it in three weeks. Wow. Yeah, so, I don't know. I guess Out in California, like, man, it's fucking around the behemoth office. There's like three 7-Elevens. I was going to say, it's all 7-Eleven on the West Coast. Yeah, and they're decent, too. I mean, they got Gatorade flavors I've never even heard about before. Well, you know, in, in like, Asian stuff, they have 7-Elevens everywhere, too. But, like, the, they got salsa in their little thing. You could put really? it on your house. Oh, yeah, well, it depends you on where you're at. That's the thing. 7-Eleven caters <laughs> to the demo graphic so like when you're in japan or if you're in like in malaysia they had 7-elevens that had like curry like saute sticks and shit that are on like the thing if you're in taiwan or or in china and you go to a 7-eleven it's got like fish balls on a skewer or some shit like that like it's always catering to whatever the community is i'll tell you one thing you can get a pizza at 7-eleven for five dollars and 99 cents yeah but and how you know good what is that pizza? it's actually not bad my, shut up my brother i think i don't believe you you can get a slice of pizza at 7-eleven for a dollar Watch the comments. They're gonna be like, you know what? You know it's what? not that bad. No, you know dude. what? You truthfully, I will take anyone, 7 -Eleven anyone pizza. from Chicago or New York and tell you to fuck yourself. They're gonna tell you, you don't know what good 
pizza tastes well, those like. guys are fucking assholes. First of all, deep dish pizza is more like lasagna. It's not even pizza. It's true. Argument over. No, 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 no. Listen. New York, I, people from I New York, not, they not, bitch about pizza. I could go, if you're from New York and you live here, you're like, ow, oh, this isn't anything like New York pizza. I could drive up to New York, bring it back down, and you will still say, this isn't anything like New I'm York not even pizza. I'm not even close to a deep dish Chicago acolyte, dude. Fuck that shit. As far as I'm concerned, pizza is New York pizza or Italian pizza. Like, real, it's like dry, and it, it, it not dry, like gross dry, but it's like a, a dry, like less saucy. It's crisp. It's a crisp, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, I'm gonna even one-up you. People who argue about whatever the best pizza is are just assholes. There you go. The yeah. End. I agree. <laughs> I agree. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if like, that's the only problem in your life about, is pizza. Yeah. yeah, how how good your pizza is yeah. to their pizza, and it's not even your asshole. pizza. It's just like your regions. Yeah, you know, like, it's interesting though yeah. because like in Chicago, a lot of people look. This is no diss to Chicago, except it is actually. But a lot of the, I, I don't know, is because they don't have a whole lot of things to hold on to or whatever. I mean, Chicago is is a wonderful, awesome city. That we has got a, friends there. Well, and it's got a great history, especially like with like fucking crime lords and shit, dude. The the, the thing is a is a cesspool of history and amazing like dark deep secrets it's a great city but to sit there and be like oh yeah th i've never met anyone from mm -hmm. chicago mm -hmm. right like from from chicago not just living in chicago from chicago especially old school mm -hmm. that does not sit around complaining about new york pizza yeah. that does not sit there and talk about how their chicago pizza is the epitome of pizza and it boggles me because in New York, New York people are just so like, eh, yeah, we're the best. And they don't say shit about it. They're just like, eh, we know it. Oh, you're from Chicago? And, and I'm not a New Yorker. But there's clearly a confidence level that I think says that speaks volumes about what you really think about your pizza. Because if you've got to sit there defending something that you have all day fucking long, guess what? Your shit's garbage. But if you're sitting there and you're just like, whatever, man, you can say whatever you want. We know we're the best. You're guess what? You're probably the best. You're almost talking with a little bit of a Chicago accent there a little bit. Yeah, Whoa, it's garbage. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. I didn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I watch way too many of these like artisan videos on yeah. shit, and a lot of them are about pizza making. Yeah. And there's these dudes in New York. There, you know, they'll. This guy bought like five ovens in a row, and he hated all of them. And he's like, I'm gonna go. He he flew over to Italy. Had some dude build him an oven in Italy. Yeah. Flew the pieces back. Reassembled Rip, it. He, no, that he ripped out his storefront so the thing would fit through the front fucking door. Reassembled it, and he was finally yeah. And he rebuilt his storefront. And he was finally happy. He's like, finally, I have an oven that'll cook my bread, cheese, and sauce pizzas the way I dude. Want. You know, we talk about how crazy that is, but then look at Japan. How would that work? Look at sushi. Sushi is what rice, seaweed, and fish, right? <coughs> or, or not yeah. even not even seaweed all the time. That's that that, that that's a roll, right? So. But even that, like the idea of rice and fish, how fucking complicated is that? But it is. It's infinitely complicated. And the people that mm -hmm. love it, or at least are artisans of it, mm -hmm. dude, I mean, the, the process and the ingredients, as simple as they may seem, are ultimately like the determined, like they are world shattering factors to those guys. Yeah, and if they, I know a lot of people listening have probably seen this, but there's a great documentary on Netflix. I, I dream, uh, I, Jiro, 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 Jiro dreams yeah. of Jiro sushi dreams or something, sushi. but that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that covers all the bases of like picking out the fish from the fish market, yeah. the getting cuts the right rice. you do, the, how you store the fish, the rice, the preparation Ma of the Yeah, rice. Prep, massaging the meat for like an hour. Not only that, yeah. but what he allowed people to serve with his sushi. Oh, like, yeah. like one of them didn't have any alcohol. One of them didn't have any like any sake or beer. He was like, "That just is not here." Yeah, he got. He, they almost like he got really like short with the guy. He's like, "Yeah, we don't do that here." We oh yeah. Plus, the guy had to pay for a reservation that included no sushi. Mm. It was just like a thousand dollars just to be able to like fucking sit there, and that did not include any of the fucking. It only food seats you like get. ten people. Yeah, the whole place. But there was a sister restaurant or something like that that was a little bit more like commercial. His son, yeah, his son ran an identical restaurant a mirror version of his where everything was in the opposite direction right but he couldn't charge as much because right of the, course like not. the allure of his father was right. like what was demanding those prices i did love there were a lot of lessons in that movie that i loved and i don't i mean the, the problem is is that i can't necessarily uh i can't necessarily attribute anything that i do to it but the idea of like mastering one thing mm -hmm. rather than like trying to do a whole bunch of stuff. He was just like, if you focus on one single thing, 
Mm -hmm. you can become a master of that. And like how his focus was all on that. And clearly none of us are fucking that. But, you know, I did I did appreciate that lesson. I thought that the dedication part of it, I definitely agree. Oh, yeah. Definitely, you know. yeah. Well, that's just interest in other things. We're all jack of trade. What, what's it? Uh, jack of all trades, yeah. but a master of none. Yeah. I mean, I fucking love watching videos like that. It doesn't even matter. Like these dudes who oh make sushi or carve wood, make or, a knife. Yeah, exactly. And make the knife holder out of leather. It's like, I yeah. love stuff like that. I yeah. just watch this all day. Yeah. There was um, uh, he used to be on the the Seattle Mariners Ichiro. I think he's. He's mm. moved on, but uh, yeah, he moved on a while ago, actually. But Japan's anyways, golden boy. Uh, him and th th there's been a couple of Japanese baseball players, but what what I loved back when he was part of um, the Mariners, he he did an interview at some point, and they talked about because he used to put his baseball bats in a humidifier, and uh, he would like wrap them in like this special cloth or something like that. that. Sounds like cheating. Yeah, and they were like, w "Why do you do all of this? I mean, like, w what's the point?" And then he had an analogy. Where he was talking about a chef and like his his wares, like his knives and his pants, and he was <clears> like, um, a chef cannot cook a delicious meal if his knives are not sharpened and his pans are not clean. the The idea of perfection, like the idea of from the very ground up, if you're going to execute something, that you need to have, you need to be prepared. You need to be. Uh, efficient and you need to be you know what I mean like I, I just love there's a lot of truth there well no but I love the idea because even if it's not quote unquote true like somebody can just fucking grab any old bat and if they're a fucking great baseball player just smack the shit out of a ball the end but it was the idea that he had like this it gives him confidence in yeah, his practice yeah mentality exactly and it gives you fo that focus that meditation that uh, that process you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to, to like execute on something. I think we all kind of come up with our own like thing, like the things that throw us off or the things that put us into the mood or into gear. But yeah, with the Japanese, it was always so like elegant the way they fucking do shit that it was like, I don't know. I, I always appreciate it. I think it. they're a little full of themselves. Hey, really? Maybe. No, no, no. no. I don't really? I, hey, listen. Any imperialistic society, especially because they're so <laughs> homogenous, You're like that with happen. your art. You're like a samurai with your fucking uh, vector art. Zoom yeah, there you in. go. Zooming in five thousand percent. Nobody's nobody's ever gonna fucking see this, but you. But it matters to you. <laughs> nobody could see my mistakes. Nobody yeah. could see them. <laughs> I get it. All right, all right. So Jeff, Jeff, I heard. Tell tell us what, something happened at the office recently. <laughs> something about tacos. Yeah, my fellow sleepy cabin fellow sleepy cabin members ate my tacos. So you got jacked by your by your uh, sleepy cabin guys. Yeah. Now, why would they eat your tacos? That doesn't seem like a very respectful thing to do. Well, Mick, you know when you when you get food at a restaurant, yeah, you get takeout and you put in a little takeout box. See, I never have that because I always eat my fucking shit like a pig. Well, I never have leftovers. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat my whole lunch, Mick. We went to a Mexican restaurant. We get a large portion. I got four tacos. Okay. I couldn't. That's pretty much what comes with the meal: four tacos, and can't order more or less. Okay. What restaurant did you go to? It was the one across from the hospital. The uh, I forget the name of it. Oh yeah, it's Senor Salsa. <laughs> Dude, it's got it's got the worst Senor fucking Salsa, name yeah. and the worst logo. It's good oh, food though. It's good food. Is it? I've never been there. Yeah. All right. Dude, I the, the interior is decked out in Mexican everything more than. Uh, Mad Max is. So, so white people. So you went to it. Mr. Tacos and then yeah. you got you got some tacos. Senor Salsa. In my <laughs> infinite kindness, I drove Spaz Kid and Shad Man to lunch. Oh my god, you drove them in my to this restaurant? Infinite yes. See, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, is when that you place first... still open? You wanna get some tacos? Yes. Yeah, I would yeah. too. Yo, when you first said Yo, that... seriously, let's go. Okay. I'd be down. For yes, that. we know. Okay. I'm serious too. We'll do but that. when you first said that your <laughs> yeah. tacos were hijacked, my assumption was Yeah. There just happened to be some random tacos in the new grounds fridge, and people were like, Where did these come from? Oh no. I no. guess we'll eat these. Oh no. I had no idea that not only did they know where they came from, but that they were with you when you got them. So there was oh, yes. no debate. No. Whose they were, no. where they came from. Okay, oh, no, no, motherfuckers. No. All right. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I'm uh, no, no, everybody, everybody, everybody at home is in the edge of their seat right now at this story. <laughs> but when you bring food home from the restaurant in your little take home box, you know, the assumption is you're going to eat them, yes. right? Yes, yes. I put them in the Newgrounds refrigerator. I'm like, they'll be safe here. This is an office. This is the office refrigerator. There's respect. My food here is safe. 
Shadman, who is staying at the office because you guys had no power. He's so responsible. And Corey, who is working with us on the game because he, res- I believed he respected me. Yes. Enough to not do that, to not betray me like this. What kind of tacos was it? Oh man, they were delicious. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they were these. They're the carne asada tacos. Dude, they came with their own, each one, each taco came with its own little lime slice. You see, see it's lid. almost as though in my mind, you didn't not finish them because you couldn't. You wanted to savor them later. Oh my God. You enjoyed them so much, you wanted to take your time What kind them. of fucking monster opens I, the fridge and sees food that's see, not what theirs happened. The second and I, eats it? The second I left that office to go take a nap because I was so tired from working so hard. So hard. I came back and that driving night. them around. Yes, to, and all to you get wanted, food. and all you wanted was your humble tacos that was, you paid for. I came back. It was four in the morning. All I wanted were those two tacos. You've been thinking about it. That's what pretty much woke you up to get back to the office. I was hungry. They tired. have cheese in them. I don't. Yeah, I'm thinking a little bit, a little bit of cheese. Okay, but you know, it's four in the morning. Yeah, they have sour cream in them. Mm, I don't. Here's the so. other thing. I don't think so. Where else could you get those? It's not like you could just be like, oh, they're gone. No problem. I'll this just go down just to the store and get Wawa some more. food at four in the morning. No, these no. Like these, two... these were gourmet. They yes. were gorgeous. Yeah. You, were, you were hungering for them. So you go back to the office at four in the morning. So I open the refrigerator door and they're not there. Did, now, hold on, hold on. Did you, <laughs> the end. Did you, did you like, Double check. Were you like, wait a minute? I know they got. Not only did I, some- not only that, I opened the door. I looked for five minutes. <laughs> I shut the door. I went back to my desk. I sat down. I said, you know what? No maybe, way. Maybe no they way. didn't look everywhere. No way. Yeah. They, I'm like, they have to be there. They have to be there. Yo, you want to call this episode "Fuck Shad and Corey"? Yes. <laughs> I went back to the refrigerator. Dude, the refrigerator is not that much. You know, the thing is almost empty to begin with. There's like three cans of Coke and like some Chinese food box that's been there for three months. You're, I'm just, like, you're just hoping they're going to materialize like, somewhere. You're yeah. like looking behind I'm the like, cans of Coke. Yeah, I'm like, maybe I just didn't look hard enough. I went and opened the door again and they still weren't there. I even, oh my God. And I hear this rustling behind me, and uh, Corey's passed out on the couch. Yeah. He's like, eh. With taco sauce on and his he, mouth. He knew he knew what I was looking for. He's like, hey, Jeff, what are, the, are you looking for your tacos? I, oh. I'm like, yes. Uh, what do you know, Corey? Yeah. What do you know about this mystery? Yeah, sh- Shadman. Uh, Aha, passing uh, the blame. Shadman ate them. Oh. And he fell back to sleep. So, so Shad ate them? Not exactly. Oh, wait a minute. There's more? Go on. He, he passed the, the buck. The plot thickened. So what, the, so what he really passed happened? passed the buck to Shad hard. So wait a minute. He's like he's like that conniving friend who's like, hey, Jeff, are you looking for the tacos? And you're like, why, yes. And he's like, oh, yeah, Shad ate those. And, you know, Shad Man's not a liar. So no, I, he's not. I trust his word. Yeah, so then what happens? Well, later, later you when Shad storm Man into his up, office, kick the door down. I said, you know, I need to, I need you to elaborate on this. What, what exactly happened here? <laughs> He's like, ah, my friend Jeff. You know, <laughs> Wait, stop. Uh, this, this whole story could fall apart immediately. Were they hard tacos or soft tacos? Soft. Thank Beautiful. You. Good. Thank Beautiful. You. Yeah, fridge soft Even tacos, with, you know, like those hard, are totally hard fine. Sort of no, f- corn, corn tortillas, tortillas or flour totally tortillas? Fine. Wait, what? Corn tortillas or flour tortillas? They were flour. Yes, there you go, perfect. But they were normal size. No, 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 no. Look, hard in a, in a refrigerator, garbage. Corn in a refrigerator, garbage. Flour, soft. In a refrigerator, totally fine. This was a fifteen dollar Mexican taco meal, my yeah, friends. Yeah, four tacos and a bowl of uh, refried beans. But anyway, wait, wait, where were the, were the beans gone to? I ate them at the restaurant. Oh, okay, but said Shadman, where my where the hell did my fucking tacos go, friend? <laughs> Former friend. <laughs> Ah, you know, I am very sorry. You know, I. <laughs> there were subtitles underneath. Yeah, I asked Corey. I asked Corey. <laughs> What about, you know, and what about these tacos? Well, Jeff, eat them. And Corey said, Jeff never eats his uh, takeout except for pizza. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Who made up these rules that I only eat my pizza leftovers and no other leftovers? That's bullshit. I always eat my leftover. If I bring it home from the restaurant, I'm going to eat it. 
Why put it in the fridge and otherwise? Said, and I had one, and he had one. <laughs> oh, Aha! Shared it. I, lo I love how Corey kind of half woke up and was like, yeah, shat ate him. It's like, you motherfucker. So then what happened? Did you, did you approach Corey? That's when he smothered yeah. Corey with a pillow. I oh, said, that's Corey, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, Corey? He's like, oh, I'm Jeff, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I was actually bitching him out over Twitter. I'm sending like all these messages to Corey over Twitter about him fucking eating my tacos. That's Johnny Utah on Twitter. He, he, he was very apologetic. I forgave him, but you know, I forgive those guys, but still. I felt I've never felt so betrayed. I'll tell you what, when I op when I couldn't find those tacos at four in the morning, I think I felt angrier angrier for about two seconds than I haven't in probably years. Years. There are two seconds where I was like out of my mind with rage. I'm like, where are these fucking tacos? And then I calmed down and I'm like, all right, I'm calm. It's only, it's only, it's, this is not something to be mad about. But I swear, man. Take, take two guys to drive two guys to lunch and they just fucking they stab me in the back. Like that. But whatever. It's we'll amazing. get you some new tacos. Right, yeah, we're gonna. Get, right. You know what? Speaking I'm just gonna of, order the same you know what, Jeff? Jeff, tonight. I got the solution. Yeah. Look, we love Corey. We love Shad. Oh, of course. They're great guys. I forgive them. Yes. We forgive them. And on top of that, <clears throat> right now we're we're gonna go get some more tacos. Let's go get those tacos back. Without them. Let's go get those tacos. Okay. Do you mean like cutting their guts open and pulling shit out? Or no, you, you the fuck. Restaurant? God, oh. you're such a fucking gangster. No. We're gonna go to the- we're gonna go to Senor- When you say get him back, it's very clear <laughs> what you mean. We're gonna go back to Mr. Tacos and we're gonna get some of those- Senor Salsa! Senor Salsa. <laughs> Fucking hair burrito, whatever the, the fuck his name is. It's just like a bright orange building in the middle of all these like classical. Like, uh, nothing on nothing on the entire street is anything but like white or. It's like, so pale. tacky. It's like a white guy clearly <laughs> owns the place, and it's like, what should we call it? Uh Senor Salsa, I guess. So fuck neither it. of you have been in there yet. I haven't. Nope. It's super decked out. Dude, fuck this podcast. It's cool, Let's though. go fucking get some tacos. Even the, even the tables are painted, are individually painted. Murals on each every single table. That's they put that's in effort. Attention. They put in effort. That's care. That's a stamper thing to do. Yeah, anyway, should we just say fuck this and just go eat? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, fuck this. All right, hey guys, thanks for joining us. <laughs> fuck don't, you. Don't thank them. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I love you. That was Senior Treachery Agua Edition. Join us next time on SleepyCast. Does anyone know the best and safest way to remove your penis from the mouth of an empty soda can? I'm asking for a friend of mine. It's stuck and bleeding really bad. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Goodbye. <laughs>